So because I'm a child, I uh, decided to watch the entirety of the Ben Burgess, David Feldman Inquisition. Um, and so I want to wrap this up today. Uh, it's already somehow 920. But so yesterday, I want to reiterate, I want to start by saying part one, go watch it. I'll link it in the description to the, the segment of this when I upload it as a segment. But go watch part one. Um, because it's amazing. Now, again, I, 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 I just really think that this is extremely embarrassing for Ben Burgess. Ben Burgess has been going on a cringe tour, folks. For those of you that don't know, he made a very bizarre Twitter thread, uh, with historical revisionism as the angle on January 6th. And I called him out. I made a video basically laughing at how stupid his takes were. And he said he would debate me. And then he kind of filibustered for three weeks and then said my words were too mean and I was I, I used naughty language. And so he found someone else to debate, Aaron Green, uh, and she destroyed him. So that was 0 for 1. And then Ben Burgess went, uh, that was it the same day or the day after? I don't know. Uh, he went on David Feldman's show and also got steamrolled, like destroyed, like straight up, like just abs like, like steam pressed, like thrown into a waffle iron. This motherfucker got owned so hard. So Ben Burgess is 0 for 2. And so, again, I, I really want to watch the rest of this. I got through most of it. But, again, I'm one of those kind of people that I pause all the time to, for my own commentary uh, sake. And I love I love hearing myself talk. And so I will pause this a lot. Uh, but either way, we're going to get try to get through the last 20 minutes in less than an hour. And we'll see how it goes. But either way, David Feldman versus or inquires into Professor Ben. I love folks. I mean, I got. Like, I just realized. I just. Oh, what am I gonna make my Zoom name? Oh, I know, Professor Ben Burgess. I literally, I folks. Professor Ben Burgess. Let's watch. The how far you've dragged the goalposts across the field here? Because first you were talking about, oh, he has this army, and then I pointed out. That we so again, go watch part one as a refresher. If you if you want a quick refresher, you're watching the live stream. Um. What they're talking about is David Feldman brings up the fact that Trump has an army of zealots that will basically do whatever he wants and that they're learning a lesson from January 6th. And Ben Burgess basically says they're all useless and none of them are capable of anything. And actually, they're, they all LARPers and don't exist. So that's Ben Burgess's argument. There are no right wing militias. There are no right wing terrorists. I know we have mass shootings all the time in this country. And, and if we find out the right wing terrorists trying to kill minorities, uh, but that doesn't actually exist. Uh, th th that's never happened. Uh, Charlottesville never happened, I guess. Uh, all these other events where right wing terrorism uh, has resulted in people dying has never happened. Th that's all fake news. And so let's listen to Ben Burgess uh, talk about that. I, I, I pointed out that the army is almost unimaginably pathetic. No, uh, a, 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 a few hundred people. And the, now you're shifting from talking about the army to talk. So again, Ben Burgess thinks there's only a couple hundred right wing terrorists in the entire country. Only a couple hundred. The Proud Boys themselves have over a couple hundred people, and that's just one group. But hey, there's only a couple hundred, all the groups combined. There's only a couple hundred. What about Patriot Prayer, Patriot Front? You know, what about all these other groups like the base? What about the Boogaloo Boys? What about all these other right wing terrorist groups? They don't exist. And if they do exist, there's like 12 of them and they're all boomers. They're not, they're totally not ex-military. They're totally not like well-trained, you know, like, you know, those people that tried to snatch uh, the governor of Michigan, you know, they were doing training drills. They were doing practice rounds. They were firing live weapons in preparation. Nah, they're, they're no big deal. They actually aren't, they are, that, not only are they no big deal, but they don't exist. It's a figment of our imaginations. Now, I have been, I have been attacked by right-wing, uh, you know, forces. I've been to protests where right-wing forces have attacked people. I have been personally targeted by right-wing uh, groups, but I guess that's not real. My trauma is not real in the eyes of Ben Burgess. And it's all because a couple boomers were at January 6th, and therefore, nothing else matters. The bombs planted at the Capitol, or planted at the DNC and RNC buildings down the street, not real. That didn't happen in the world of Ben Burgess. Talking about people trivializing it, but you don't overthrow governments through trivialization. I, what, what are you talking about? He, I'm saying that it wasn't just the Oath Keepers and it wasn't just the, the Proud Boys. It was the Republican Party. And look at, look at how they're, they're, they're Ben just looks sad. 
Like, hold up. I gotta take a fucking screenshot of this. Like, that's just, like, he looks unimaginably sad. Like, he just look. And, I again, I love that his shirt has dead on it in that instance. Like, because his soul looks like he's dead. Like, he literally, like, his, his eyes look like the soul that he once had has left his body and is just somewhere else right now. But, like, he just looks... And, again, I... I, I want to say this, like, I want to reiterate, I do not hate Ben Burgess. I have one of his books. It's upside down right now because, you know, the same way that because I don't like America, I will flip the American flag upside down. Uh, it's totally not because I grabbed it and it just happened to be upside down. But this is my, my take on Ben Burgess. Uh, but again, I don't hate him. I'm not a hater. I'm not like Ben's a fascist Nazi. I just think he's stupid. I think he's lost the plot and I think he's being dumb. I think he is obsessed with something that does not not only does not warrant an obsession, but does not even really, it's not congruent with reality. And I think it's going, it's causing him to go down a, a pipeline, a rabbit hole of cringe. Again, Ben Burgess thinks that I am too mean to be in the respectable realm of debate. Yet Glenn Greenwald, who has millions of followers, who goes on transphobic rants talking about how trans people are brutal, like, you know, beasts that will attack, like, young women or some shit. Uh... And, you know, he's afraid of bisexual people, Glenn Greenwald. He says, you're not really bi unless you're married to two people that are of, you know, the different genders or whatever because he doesn't believe in non-binary people either. Uh, like, Glenn Greenwald's a total freak. Uh, and Brett Ben Burgess thinks that Glenn Greenwald is more within the realm of respectability than me, which is somehow, that's, that's shocking. But either way, I just want to say, like, what is going on in this guy's brain? I don't know. Stonewalling this investigation. Yes, because 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 congressional investigations in general, I think there are two or three exceptions. Maybe the Church Committee, the uh, the, the the committee that drafted the Articles of Impeachment against Nixon, maybe one or two others. Congressional investigations are about rhetorical point scoring and very little else. What whether it's Benghazi or whether or, or 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 whether it's this. So of course, if the people who are point scoring are trying to make you look bad, then you're going to stonewall it, whichever shoe, whichever uh, whichever foot the shoe happens to be on at any given time. What? I mean, that's that's what the, all of those memes of Hillary Clinton looking bored, you know, at the uh, Benghazi hearings were, uh, were, were, were about that. But I would submit what? that there, there is a night and day difference between being part of an army that is ready to take up arms for the purpose of trying to overthrow the most powerful government that's ever existed and stonewalling or trivializing or any of these things. I think that the, I don't think the one question is relevant to the other. It's very much because you don't see, you don't see the threat. I didn't uh, storm the beaches of Normandy. I, you know, if I were, I, let's say I was whatever, but I was rooting, I was giving sucker, I was have, I would have victory gardens, I would support, I would support D-Day. You have about what seven? Well, if 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 if, if, if D-Day was stormed by by eight hundred mostly unarmed people, uh, then it wouldn't matter if a billion people, it wouldn't matter if ten billion people had victory Mario gardens what and were hypothetically prepared to cheer it on. Well, uh, you know, you, you, need, you need to have an actual army. There's no army in this. How many people did it take to kill Kennedy? You don't need uh, a hundred. You, how many people of the 75? Wait, 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 so why, 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 is, why is killing Kennedy relevant here? Because you don't need 500,000 people. Yes, if, if, the, if the goal is to assassinate one person, you don't. If the goal is to overthrow a government, you absolutely do. And of the 75 million people who voted for Trump, how many of them sympathized with the people who stormed the Capitol? What percentage? What percentage of them were rooting for that? I have no idea. No I love you. I love David Feldman. Like, I just want to say, God bless David Feldman. Like, I just have to say, and I said that to him yesterday. Uh, but like, like I love his like matter of fact questions that are like extremely relevant. And then he has that percentage. Look of, what percentage of them were rooting for that? His look of disapproval. Like he's like he's like upset that like his child like you know got wrapped within like the the, the non cool kids crowd or something like it just he looks so like disapprovingly at Ben Burgess which again again I just love that he's wearing that fucking uh, shirt that says dead on it because it's so funny but again okay there have been polls that have said around half of Republicans think that January sixth was cool and no big deal all right seventy five million people voted for Donald Trump. What's half of that? Anyone? Anyone? Like, what, 37 million? Okay, so 37 million people are at least sympathetic? That's weird! That's a lot of people! You might be thinking, oh, it's only 10% of the country. What was the percentage of the population that uh, overthrew the king of England? In the revolution? Right. Uh, okay. 
So if we've got 10% of the country that is at least sympathetic, and we've got, you know, a good fraction of those people that, you know, are gun nuts and take up arms, that's not good. That's not good. It's just not good, folks. I have no idea, neither do you. I don't care. Really? I would, because that's how governments get overthrown. When there's one party that doesn't resort to election, when they realize that they can't win at the ballot box and they can't win in the courtrooms, they storm the building. What percentage? But, but, but you're going from a party storming it to you're, you're switching back and forth from 800 people, which wouldn't be a big demonstration in Lansing, Michigan. They are part of a larger movement that doesn't. The idea that Ben Burgess is so wrapped up in his terminally online fucking cringe tour that he does not understand the threat of right-wing violence at all and again he spent most of this debate go watch part one of my debate review he spent most of this conversation talking about how black lives matter quote-unquote riots are worse than january 6th he lied and said that black lives matter demonstrators used mortars mortars ben burgess said that a couple of teenagers that are upset that police keep killing black people for no reason, he said they used mortars, military fucking weapons of mass destruction that can, like, wipe out cities. He just said, oh, yeah, they were using mortars. What? What? Black Lives Matter rioters used mortars? Like, what does that sound like? It sounds straight out of, like, Andy No's mouth. It's ridiculous. This motherfucker has lost the plot doesn't recognize Joe Biden as our president, that thinks the election was stolen. You have at least 50 million voters in this country. Well, there, 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 there have certainly been some elections in, uh, in the past that I thought were stolen, and so did you. Yeah, but uh, I they, stormed the Capitol. Yes, but neither did they. You're talking about, you, you know, you're talking about 800 people who did. Do you, think, for do, do, you, do, you, do you think that in 2000, if there were 800 people who could have, who were in some position to, that you couldn't have found 800 people in the entire country who were willing to do that? The Republican Party, the Brooks Brothers riot when they were counting the chads yes the republican party had a mini brooks brother riot when they were counting chads and that they got away with nobody was arrested and i'm telling you your failure to see that there is an undercurrent in this country that supports the people who stormed the capitol it's not just them it is millions and millions of armed racists again david feldman's point is so important January 6th happened. Some people are getting slaps on the wrist eight months in jail, right? Imagine. Imagine what's going to happen if Trump runs for president again. Now, it might not even last that long until they do another attempt. But let's say Trump runs for president again and loses again because he lost in 2020 like a loser because he's a loser. But let's say he loses in 2024. And let's say he does the same playbook. What's there, what's there going to be to prevent a January 6th too? And they've had four years to prepare. And they know that they're going to get away with it. They know the cops will be on their side. They learn lessons. What doesn't Ben Burgess understand about this? Separatists who are... There was a poll done that said... I think, it, like, hold up. Let me get this poll. Hold up. 66%. I'm going to get you this poll, folks. 66% of Southern Republicans are in favor of seceding from the United States. 62 thirds of Republicans in Southern states want to ditch and leave. Is that not alarming? And maybe I should just do a whole segment on this. But is that not alarming to you? Rooting. Is it, wait, 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 wait. So you think there are millions of armed separatists in the United States? I, I just want to make sure I heard that right. What, uh, there are millions of people who are armed, who are tend to be, tend to be racists. Okay, 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 but that's a pretty different claim. Do you think there are millions of armed separatists as opposed to like hundreds? Do you think there are millions? What is 66% of 75 million? Well, uh, let's look at the southern states. So let's look at like half of that. 
So let's look at 30 million. What is 66% of 30 million? Hello? Let's pretend that the southern states only have 20 million people. Let's pretend they have 10 million people. What is 66% of 10 million that want to leave the United States? They want to get the fuck out. They want to secede and make their own ethno state. Nah. It's only it's only a couple hundred. It's only like 10 boomers. You want to separatists. Okay, I Hey Jan, um I am my schedule is starting to free up a little bit more. Uh, so feel free to send me another email because I, I must have missed it. Send me another email. Um, because I'm I've been a little I've been a little busy lately, but send me another email like and I'll get back to you. I, I will for the sake of this argument, I will retract that because that's not germane to the conversation. Oh, I mean, it's, I, 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 mean I mean it is if we're talking about, like about scales of President threat. Trump. Was President Trump happy or ups, uh, or upset? By those people. Well, I, I already, I already said he, egged, he, uh, he egged them on. That was one of the first things I said in the beginning of the conversation. Like, you know, but, but you can. But this is, this is. You know, this, this reminds me of nothing so much as as being told about how many you know Muslims in different countries were happy you know about 9/11 you know happening because you know because they resented the United States. And I would say that the thoughts in people's heads do not by themselves add up to a threat of overthrowing government. And if we're going did you see that? Like what he just did. What the fuck is going on? What is go- He just compared right-wingers, 66% of Southern Republicans want to secede from the United States, right? 50%-ish believe that the election was stolen, right? He just compared that to Muslims who don't like America. People- right, that are overseas and live in other countries who don't like America have a reason not to like America that's pretty good. It's because America keeps killing them and their family members and their friends and destroying their cities and destroying their fucking culture. That's a good reason not to like America. What is the reason for 66% of Southern Republicans to not like America? Because they're buying into conspiracy theories that have been proven false time and time again? To compare those things requires a, a degree of stupidity that is just impossible to measure. It's like a black hole of, of, of dumb, dumb garbage. What the fuck is he doing? What is this? What? What? Let me rewind a little bit. because you know because they resented the united states and i would say that the thoughts in people's heads do not by themselves add up to a threat of overthrowing government and if we're going to be realistic about threats we don't want to we don't want to downplay them we also don't want to upplay them then i would say by any objective metric just like bush and cheney and ashcroft and rumsfeld i would actually say you should upplay threats because what's the worst thing can happen if the threat doesn't go through Man, I spent a little time a little bit more nervous than I should have been. What's the worst thing that can happen if the threat does go through and you're not prepared? Oh, you die. Better safe than sorry, in my opinion. I would rather upplay a threat than downplay a threat. We're a and again, the focus on, oh, we're not upplaying, we're not downplaying, we're trying to meet the perfect, there is no perfect fucking line of thought. And if, whatever Ben Burgess is spewing certainly is not it. It's certainly not it. Okay? So if you're trying to find the perfect analysis, this isn't math, motherfucker. There isn't a perfect analysis. Words have different meanings to different people. Threats have different meanings to different people. Like, there is no perfect analysis. You cannot logic your way into this scenario or out of this scenario because this isn't math. This isn't like a jigsaw puzzle where there's like one solution. A vastly greater threat to Americans after 9-11 than Al-Qaeda was, even though Al-Qaeda did kill 3,000 people. I'd say that an expansion of the security state, setting precedence, you know, for, 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 for crackdowns, an expanded focus on domestic extremists, which is absolutely the agenda of those hearings right now, is a much greater threat to democracy, to the left, than a they relative know, handful of, of, of lunatics. Uh, you know, overthrowing, the overthrowing the results of a presidential election 
But there was never any chance of them overthrowing those. Uh, that was never in the cards. That that's what it was. In 2000, Al Gore won the popular vote. He won the Electoral College. They stopped the counting process in one state so that George Bush would somehow be declared the victor. The Supreme Court picked the president and then said, sorry, don't ever reference this case again. This is a one-off. Al Gore was the rightful 43rd president of the United States of America. Instead, like a beta male, he decided not to fight it at all when he was in his full right to fight that shit. And in their process of not fighting it and downplaying the threat, we got the fucking eight years of the hell on earth that was the Bush administration. So Trump, let's assume Trump was a little closer and a little more states. And let's assume Trump was a little bit better about how he did things. He would still be president right now, right? There's a lot of almosts in all, all like, yeah, there's just a lot of almosts that resulted in Biden actually making it to the presidency. And thank God he did. But the idea that Ben is saying something's impossible when it's already happened to me is astounding. Look at the Georgia phone call. Look at the, do you all remember the Georgia phone call? Do you remember that? We just forgot about that because it leaked three days before January 6th. I want to play you a clip from the Georgia phone call to show you just how ridiculous and how like much of a conspiracy theorist Donald Trump is. They went to uh, the table with the black robe, the black uh, shield, and they pulled out the votes. No they went to the tables with the black robe and the black shield. What the fuck? I will... Y'all... If y'all, if y'all like want to go back in time and watch my live stream, I watched the entirety of the Trump Georgia call on stream. When this motherfucker said the black robe and the black shield, I literally, I, I died. I died and was reborn a new person because it was so funny. But we have to understand he was active. A new story just came out recently that said that Donald Trump pressured the Department of Justice to declare the election unfit or corrupt and then said, quote, I'll take care of the rest. He spent the entirety of the lame duck session trying to install himself as dictator. And he convinced millions of people that that's what should have happened. It was a, it was a last ditch spasm of rage at their inability to overthrow them. There was never the tiniest chance that they could have somehow overthrown them. Really, what would have happened? They were 40 seconds-ish away from killing Mike Pence, the vice president. They were down the hall and to the left. As Mike Pence was running away from his own voters with nuclear launch codes in hand. Really? Yes, of course. Really. Actually, I want to know. Do you think what I just said is false? Do you think there was a chance that the uh, Capitol rioters could have somehow overturned the result of the election? Oh, yes. How? Uh, I don't. I OK. Without interrupting me, this is what I think. Okay, good. Then, then you don't interrupt me next time. And wait, wait, oh, my wait, God, wait. Ben. If Nancy Pelosi. Uh, ben, if I can't interrupt you, then you can't interrupt me next time. Like, what a child. He's trying to, like, do these point scores. It's so ridiculous. But anyway, let's go. I've been sitting in her office, and those people got in and saw her. The ones who, you know, you've seen the tapes. We're coming from you, Nancy. We're going to hang you. People are going to die today. I like to believe that had Nancy Pelosi seen those people, I like to believe but even though they gouged officers' eyes and broke windows and used American flag poles to, to and threw, uh, I don't know if you've seen the videos or not. I, I would watch them. I'd like to believe- Another thing I want to talk about that puts my perspective uh, into a little bit better understanding is the morning of January 6th, I made the decision that I'm going to do a live stream the entire day. Why? Did I decide that? You may ask. Why would I decide to do a 16 hour live show on January 6th? Because I knew something would happen on January 6th. If a high school dropout in her bedroom knows more about what's going to happen than a professor at a college or the entirety of the U.S. military or the entirety of the Capitol Police, there's a problem. That's a problem. I thought to myself, these people are crazy. 
They're all in one place. Shit's going to get real. Now, my live stream was taken down because YouTube, for whatever reason, just tries to remove all footage of January 6th from the platform. Um, someday I'll upload that stream to another website, but again, it's 16 hours long, so it's, it's, maybe I'll just release it on Blu-ray. I don't, <laughs> like, the complete January 6th live stream, Blu-ray, like, box set. If you're interested in that, actually, like, genuinely let me know, because I don't know where else I would post a 16-hour video. But, if I knew these motherfuckers were crazy and could actually destroy shit or make shit actually really bad, you're telling me the U.S. government didn't know? You're telling me the Capitol Police didn't know? You're telling me all of Congress didn't know? You're telling me a professor at a college didn't know? Huh? If it had Nancy Pelosi been in front of them, she would have defused the situation. They would have went, oh my God, this is insane. I like to believe that. But there are always people who are true believers who would have wanted to kill her. I happen to believe that if they had gotten their hands on Mike Pence, they would have said, if you don't overturn this election, we're going to, you know what, to Nancy Pelosi and Mike Pence. There, but for Eugene Goodman, Officer Goodman, who diverted the, the, the rioters, the insurrectionists, there, but for Eugene Goodman, Officer Eugene Goodman, they could have gotten their hands on a lawmaker and we would have had a hostage situation. Here's what we know for sure. If there... We know that there would have been a hostage situation. So what do you think to get interested. Nancy Pelosi out of the clutches of these monsters or Mike Pence out of the clutches of these monsters? You don't think we would have postponed the certification to save the lives of Mike Pence and Nancy Pelosi? What I think would have happened? Eventually, eventually one would hope that we would have freed Pelosi and Mike Pence and we would have certified that election. But the, the precedent, and it already is over, the precedent of a peaceful transition is gone. That it's, a, it's no longer a given. So I, I just want to say two things. David Feldman, again, knocking out of the park. Things about that. One, even in this fantasy scenario that's entirely hypothetical that you came up with. I, uh, was... I, I love this fantasy scenario. If you would have talked to Ben Burgess on January 5th and said, yeah, people are going to break into the Capitol. You know what he probably would have said? Oh, that'll never happen. Ben Burgess is a, a complete lunatic. I'm sorry, but at this point, like, I don't know how anyone can respect him at all. This is mind-numbing. Like, I want to say this. I used to watch his, like, segments on the Michael Brooks show. I bought his, you know, I got his books. I read his books. Right, I followed him on Twitter. I liked a lot of his content on YouTube for a while. But this, this is not, like, this is not acceptable. And we need to draw a line on what is acceptable to call yourself a leftist and while believing. We rightfully say that Jimmy Dore is not a leftist because he doesn't believe in the principles of organizing socialism. He doesn't believe in leftist ideology. He just screams about Medicare for all and forced to vote to get subscribers on YouTube. We can all understand he's not a leftist. We can all understand that Joe Biden is not a leftist because he is a neoliberal shill. He's racist. Look at the eviction moratorium that just expired. We, where do we draw the line on people like Ben Burgess? Because honestly, I'm drawing the line here. The, the, result, the result was not that the election was overturned. You know, by the time you were done with your scenario, you admitted that, yeah, that would not have actually meant the election was overturned. It would have delayed it by a day or two. It would not have overturned the election. Oh, no, I don't that's, know. Well, well, that's what you just said. I don't right? know. Like, like, ben Burgess just over his head didn't understand a word David Feldman said. By the way, David Feldman freeze frame. So in fact, I'm going to grab that. That's amazing. But uh, the whole point is let's say the certification was delayed. Then what? We've never been in that situation. It's a constitutional crisis. At that point, anything can happen. The Constitution has been thrown out the window. And the whole point is they would have had more time and more leverage. What if it were delayed until January 20th? Then what would have happened? Ben Burgess is literally like... 
he's, he's out of control. Someone put the leash on this motherfucker. Like I, I, I think that I think that just, I can't. I, I, I think you were trying to game it out in an honest way, and and at the end of doing so, you admitted that even in that scenario, the election would not have overturned. The other thing I want to say at is, what cost? At what? So 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 so, right. so you, you you just you just got upset at me for interrupting you. Uh, the uh, the other thing I was going to say is that one thing that I am a hundred percent sure about in that situation that you know that somebody was taken hostage, that a, uh, a lawmaker was taken hostage. Something I'm 100% sure about is by the end of that, every single one of those people would have been massacred by Capitol Police. Including? Uh, they would be dead. Including whoever was taken hostage. Whether whether that would have happened, you know, whether they would have managed to extricate them or not, I'm saying that in any scenario where there was vi actual violence against a member of Congress, all of those people would be dead. And I think you know that. So what? I think, well, so what is that, they, uh, is that we're talking about whether there was ever any possibility that this is something that could have overturned the result of the election. That this could have been like a successful coup. And I'm saying... 80% of police voted for Donald Trump. The leader of the National Guard delayed the response by three hours, proving that they had a hand and could do whatever they wanted. But again, 80% of police voted for Donald Trump. You're telling me that police would have all unilaterally decided to do their job? I don't buy that. I don't buy that for a second. I don't buy for a goddamn second that Capitol Police would have done their job. Let's say Nancy Pelosi, Mike Pence, let's say AOC, a couple other people were held hostage. And let's say all the cops were like, well, what if we like, what if we have to pick a side here? Well, we all voted for Trump. Let's just go with Trump. They let the motherfuckers into the building. They didn't secure the building enough. They let them in. There were off-duty undercover cops at the riot, at the insurrection, at the coup. 80% of cops voted for Donald Trump. We can't forget that. And not only is that not the case, I think we know, I think we should all admit, if you're being honest about it, that the... Uh, that not only would it not have resulted in, you know, Donald Trump still being president, you know, come January 20th, uh, the most immediate result uh, would have uh, would have been that all of those people, all of those people would have died. Uh, the, uh, the All of those rioters would have died. Uh, the uh, the election uh, still would have still, 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 still would have been certified. And we'd probably be, uh, be facing an unfathomably more dramatic uh, crackdown on domestic extremists now if that had happened. When Horace Wessel died. He was completely forgotten. And uh, the, the woman, uh, Ashley, what's the woman who was shot? Ashley Babbitt. Ashley Babbitt. They forgot about knows. her. They killed her. And she's not, nobody's martyring her. This, it's over, right? This whole thing is, the insurrection or the riot, as you call it, is over. Yeah, say what you're saying. Don't disguise it as smarmy questions. Okay. It's, do you believe, I don't believe it's over. Do I, do I, do I believe that, the, uh, that, uh, that it's something that you're going to stop? That people are going to stop what? I don't believe the right wing, the violent right wing, who, who believe in Trump and whoever is behind Trump. I don't believe it ended on January 6th. And I don't- no, Of course not. Of course not. And course I think- not. I've, I think never, I've never hinted at thinking otherwise, but they have a, uh, but there's, there's a difference between saying that right-wing violence existed before January 6th, it will exist after January 6th, it's now part of the mythology, you know, of, of some right-wingers in the same way that it now seems to be part you know, it now seems to be like central to the cosmology of MSNBC liberals. You know, they talk about capital T, capital I, the insurrection uh, as 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 if uh, this was, you know, the most important event that's happened in, you know, centuries uh, to uh, to hear them uh, to hear them talk about it. Uh, this uh, this event where where zero people were killed uh, by, uh, by 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 rioters. But yes, absolutely. Of course, all these things are going to uh, are going to continue. Uh, gonna... The emphasis on zero people were killed by rioters is so ridiculous because it hinges on a word that it has no, it's again, it's not math. I would say if you take, uh, you know, uh, you know, amphetamines and you have a heart attack, if you were just like in a, if you were walking down the sidewalk and you overdosed, you'd have a higher chance of having your life saved because of, you know, someone calling an ambulance, someone helping you. But if you have an overdose at an insurrection attempt, right, where no one cares about you, you die because of the insurrection, right? You were killed by the sheer fact that the insurrection happened, right? The people that died that day were killed by the insurrectionists because if they were not there, if the insurrection did not happen, they would still be alive. Therefore, they were killed by the quote-unquote rioters.
It's not that fucking hard. It's it's not. In fact, the guy's a fucking moron. I continue to exist of course trumpism would have continued to exist with or without january 6 of course right-wing political violence will continue to exist with or without january 6 but just but that's like saying uh did al-qaeda continue to exist after 9 11 yeah it did right you know were there going to be other terrorist attacks as there have been over the years yeah there were but was al-qaeda uh the profound threat that it was inflated into or was the cure worse than the disease and that's the same question in this case that's a separate track. Let me ask you last question. I'm going to give you this argument because you're my guest. Okay? You won the argument because I need I want you to come back. My last question on give them an inquisition. Sure. Let's let's do it. How upset were you about January 6th? Did you believe now here, here here this is what I think is going on on the on the dirtbag left. Which, for the for the record, I have no idea what that expression means, but go on. what it was. By modeling the behavior. You never okay, 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 okay. <laughs> there are people, there there is an impulse in everyone who looked at January 6th and said, you know what? I don't approve of I'm talking about people on our side. I don't approve of violence. I don't like the people who stormed the Capitol, but I also don't like Pelosi. I don't like Schumer. It's good that they should feel the way we feel. Let them know what it's like to have the sheriff kicking down our door to evict us. They don't answer our calls. They don't read our emails. This is what happens and a pox on everybody. If I know that that's a bad feeling to have, but I know there's a tiny part of me that felt that because I don't like Pelosi. I don't like the Democrats. Okay. But I'm also mature enough to know that the Democrats are not nearly as dangerous to me as these Republicans are. Now, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then you get the last word. Ask a member, and I'm going to play the uh, Jew card and mm. make you squirm. This is because this is, you got me desperate, so I'm playing the Jew card. <laughs> this is what you've done to me. Okay? Ask anybody who's a member of a protected class what they see on January 6th. Ask a member of the LGBTQ community. Ask a woman. Ask a Muslim. If Donald Trump, he sent a signal that day, I can send these idiots, these violent thugs, to destroy the Capitol, which they did. They, they did destroy the Capitol that day. I can send them to your mosque, your temple, to the, the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida. I can send my people extrajudicially the way Duterte does in the Philippines. I don't need the police. I got those thugs. 80% of cops voted for Trump, so the cops would be on their side. Just throwing that out there. That was the message Trump sent that day and if you think they're going away watch the midterms watch the threats you think that guy that that the the, the state's attorney generals uh, the state the state just want to note that i've already said i don't think any of the things that you're saying you think but go on okay the secretaries of states who have to certify the, the elections and uh, come midterms you don't think they're thinking about their homes being stormed and hostage situations you don't think you don't think that chills the democratic process? You think that just happened spontaneously January 6th? This is all part of a larger movement, an authoritarian fascist movement. It isn't going to end unless we lock these people up. I got to say, I disagree with Feldman there. I don't think locking them up is going to make anything end because there's no way with the system that we have that we could accurately and justifiably lock these people up for what? What are we going to lock them up for? For being right wing? Right? What we need to do is declare the Republican Party a terrorist organization. Full stop. That's that's my opinion. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, the all of this stuff, do you think is irrelevant? Because if you just any roll back the tape a couple minutes. Ago. Anything that makes me look dumb is irrelevant. Why? Because it makes me look dumb. If you say something that completely destroys my entire arguments, then it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your argument is because it's irrelevant. The only thing that's relevant is the mathematical definition of the word killed, which, by the way, does not exist. But that's not ma that doesn't matter because it's irrelevant. All the, the only relevant thing in the entire world is my opinion on what the word killed means. Nothing else matters. Well, I'm Ben Burgess. I think most of the things that you, you started with, do you think? But um, but as to uh, how did I feel on January 6th, horrified. 
I mean, I, I think that um, clearly that's, not. that's certainly my reaction. Uh, clearly not. You can watch me uh, react to it in real time on YouTube, but YouTube actually took that down as part of the uh, explosion of tech censorship following January 6th, which is one small taste of why it is so profoundly dangerous. Reminder, if anyone wants me to release uh, the January 6th stream on Blu-ray, let me know. I will actually do that because it sounds really funny and, and people would buy it and I could get money. For us to get obsessed with, uh, with this sort of red versus blue uh, you know, games about this and take our eyes off the ball of increased state repression, which is objectively the most important issue. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I was horrified by it. I mean, somewhat less as time went on and a lot of the things that we were told on the day and in the subsequent days turned out not to be true, uh, that, you know, that the coroner, you know, debunked claim after claim after claim that was initially made, that, you know, the charging documents didn't include a lot of the things that we were originally told happened, etc. But yes, yeah, still, uh, I think, I, I still think that, you know, even if it was overstated, uh, that, you know, that uh, that I, I thought, because most of the initial reports were talking as if everybody was armed, uh, the sickness thing turned out not to be true, the zip tie thing turned out to be not to be true, etc. So all of that definitely, you know, decreases it. But yes, I mean, I was, I was horrified by it initially. And even if, like, in some respects, it turns out certain aspects. Why are you giving Burgess the Trump voice? You know why. I'm overhyped. I'm still disgusted by it. Uh, looking back on it, I, I don't recognize my psychology in that description of the, uh, the dirtbag left, whatever that is. Uh, the... Um, do uh you know do i think um do i think uh that the trumpism you know is, is, is going away uh of course not uh you know the as, as i said uh if anything i think that i think that all of this is keeping it alive i think that the i think that the 24 7 obsession of liberals with donald trump uh you know several months after he lost left office and sort of inflating uh one six into this historical event you know that joe biden said it was the most important attack on our democracy in 150 years which should be news to, you know, to speaking of Jews, you know, Cheney and Goodwin's, uh, you know, uh, you know, families, you know, and, and all the other civil rights workers who were actually murdered uh, registering people to vote. Uh, you know, do I think that right wing authoritarianism is a problem? Yeah, I don't think that I don't think that the that the part of it that you should be worried about so much is uh, QAnon lunatic storming buildings. I think the part of it you should be worried about uh, is, uh, you know, is, is just legislatures, uh, including legislators, including lots of never Trump people, you know, passing laws to uh, to, to make it uh, to make it harder harder to vote uh, as to asking members of oppressed groups uh, i would just gently suggest that oppressed groups are not a hive mind uh, that uh, are not hive minds that uh, that you have ah. uh, that you have members of every single group that you just rattled off ah. you think what i think about this you have members of every single group who don't agree with either of us who maybe agree with some of the dumb republican points about this uh that that, that so that... because there's one trans woman who is a republican that means that most trans women aren't afraid of right-wing extremism what what? Because there's one black person who voted for Trump, that automatically means that every other black person being afraid of right-wing extremism doesn't matter. What? What? Bro, are you stupid? Kind of identitarian deference, you know, listen to what Group X says only works if you think, which is, by the way, a really racist thing to think, that Group X is uh, is, is a hive mind. Uh, no one said that. We just that. have to figure it out. For no one said that. We can't that. rely on what is everybody in some oppressed no group. No one said that. Members of oppressed groups, like everybody else, are all over the place. It's too early. When your synagogue, mosque, or church is being shot up, you have a hive mind. We have to wrap it up. Well, they, they well, for, uh, so I think that, um, you know, about that, uh, about that, perhaps, I think the idea that 800, uh, 800 people, uh, you know, uh, storming into a Capitol building, some of them being militia people and doing violent things, uh, you know, most of them wandering around chanting slogans, uh, that, that, uh, and then the response to that being that immediately uh, Trump himself turned on them uh, they, uh, and abandoned them, that they, uh, that they couldn't, you know, they tried to go to the airport to go home, that they all had the book thrown at them afterwards, that this somehow made it more likely that they're going to be church or synagogue shootings. Uh, I do not see it. And, uh, and I think that you are going to find members of every single one of those groups who agree with me. Doesn't mean I'm right any more than it means that we're right, but it does mean that we have to think for ourselves. I love you. I may not agree with what you're saying, but I will fight to the death of myself <laughs> to try to censor you. All right. Well, I will also fight to your death in this cause. Enjoy the love nuts. <laughs> What's the team? No, that, that, is, that is the team. It was just, mm. that, was, that was just a perfect name. Felt in time in there. I, I, love nuts. I love you. I got to get this show up. <laughs> All, right. All right. Love you too. Baby. Love you too. Bye. All right. Let's see what David says here. I gotta go soon, so uh, I want to see what he says here, though. Like because apparently he says some stuff. Whoa, or not? Here, I'm back. I'm back. 
Let's pretend that didn't happen, shall we? Hi, welcome back to the David Feldman Show, <laughs> davidfeldmanshow.com. Uh, subscribe to the show wherever you get your pod. Zoom room and join apologies for uh, being late with the, the link today. I appreciate uh, the Hirschenfels. I want to go over a little more. I said we're going to talk about January 6th. Uh, Mo Brooks is a Republican congressman from Alabama's 5th Congressional District, and he is being sued by the Democrats. He's being sued by Congressman Eric Swalwell. He ran for president, if you remember. Uh, in 2020, Swalwell is uh, accusing Mo Brooks of inciting violence on January 6th. He, Swalwell claims that when Mo Brooks stood at the ellipse before Donald Trump went on stage, when Congressman Mo Brooks screamed, today is the day we start taking down names and kicking ass, he was, according to this lawsuit, he was inciting violence against the Capitol. There's this thing called the Westfall Act that Donald Trump invoked when he was being sued for defamation by E. Jean Carroll. This is the woman who was raped by Donald Trump in Bergdorf Goodman. And there's a statute of limitations on the rape. So E. Jean Carroll sued Trump for defamation. And the Justice Department invoked the Westfall Act, saying that you cannot sue a government official when they are doing something in the service of the government. And so the Justice Department refused to uh, let that case go forward. They did rule, surprisingly, this Justice Department will not defend Mo Brooks in this lawsuit where he's being accused of inciting violence at the Capitol. Well, Mo Brooks gave an interview, Congressman Mo Brooks gave an interview with Slate, and it came out today that before he went up and spoke on January 6th, he put on body armor. He told Slate magazine that on January 5th, he was tipped off that something was about to go down. He was told that there were many risks uh, to expect leading up to the speech. He told Slate, I was warned on Monday, January 4th, that there might be risks associated with the next few days. And as a consequence, he goes on to say, of those warnings, I did not go to my condo. Instead, I slept on the floor of my office. And when I gave my speech at the ellipse, I was wearing body armor. That's why I was wearing that nice little windbreaker to cover up the body armor. This wasn't a riot. This was a planned insurrection. This was planned, and the people who stood on the ellipse threw, threw a lit match onto that gasoline. They knew those rags were filled with kerosene, and that speech that Trump gave, he threw a lit match onto those people, and they erupted. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, I also want you to note the U.S. Capitol Police at the last minute have backed down on Thursday. They said they will not arrest members of the House of Representatives who refuse to wear a face mask. Now, this is this big... All controversy right. this week. Nick. So uh, I just wanted to say that is such a hilarious debate. I'm glad I watched the full of it. Well, I mean, it was an inquisition, of course. Um, incredible, incredible. Uh, Ben Burgess has lost the plot. I really have to say now if Ben Burgess wants to apologize, right? If he wants to say, wow, I was dumb as a shit fuck, then I'll accept that. But until then, this motherfucker has lost the plot. Maxi, my dog is having nightmares. Until then, he's he's probably thinking about January 6th. Until then, Ben has lost the plot. I don't know what the fuck is going on here. Um, And, you know, we really need to look at everything he says with a very large question mark because of this behavior. And he needs to stop it as soon as possible. And again, I don't think it's useful to call Ben Burgess a Nazi because he is in effort supporting Nazis. I think centrists historically have supported Nazis but aren't Nazis themselves. And that it's an important distinction to say that someone is so dumb that they are supporting Nazism while claiming to not support Nazism. There is a very important distinction there. Um, and so it really needs to be understood. I do not think Ben Burgess is a Nazi or a fascist infiltrator. I think he's just a fucking moron. I think he has nefarious incentives in the form of he wants to be contrarian for the sake of gaining views. He wants to have like a, he literally is going on a cringe tour for the sake of viewership. He wants money. He wants super chats. That's why he does these debates where he asks for super chat questions, right? It's all a big money tour. Now, again, you can disagree with that. If, if that, if Ben Burgess watches this and he thinks that what I'm saying is sacrilege, fair point. I mean, obviously that's what you would be saying. And I, you know, and I would love to have this conversation, but the guy's just lost the plot. He is no longer at this point useful to accomplish or to gain left-wing goals. Uh, he is he is at this point more useful for right-wing propaganda. He thinks Glenn Greenwald is a better leftist, better leftist than myself. That's what he thinks. So I mean, again, I have no interest in what Ben has to say on anything at this point until he recognizes how wrong he is on something like this. I see everything he says in a different light. Because, again, what's important here 
A very important thing when it comes to anyone, especially political commentators online, is being able to admit when they're wrong. I can admit when I'm wrong. I've done a lot of stupid shit. I've said a lot of really incorrect things, right? I've lost the plot a couple times and then I decided to read more into it and realize that, oh, what I was saying before was dumb. And my ability to actually change my mind is what keeps me sane because I don't dig my heels in when it comes to defending positions that are constantly being destroyed over and over and over again. If Ben Burgess goes away from that conversation with David Feldman thinking that he won or thinking that, you know, oh, both sides agree to disagree, that's a problem. He needs to be able to learn from his mistakes. And until he showcases that he is able to learn from his mistakes, at this point, I'm declaring everything he says to be useless. And if he, in, if he truly internally knows what he is saying is, is, is horrible information and garbage, yet he is afraid to apologize, yet he is afraid to change his mind, and instead wants to kind of use these like swimming through like, you know, the get out of jail free cards, Sam Harris style. That's a bigger problem. He needs to own up to it. This is a very large problem. I don't want to, again, I don't hate Ben Burgess. I don't know why I have to say that. or I don't know why I feel compelled to say that, but I, I do. This guy really needs to apologize for this shit because this is some horrible stuff that he's doing. The Twitter thread was bad enough. I made a video about the Twitter thread. Now, again, am I cl going to claim single-handedly, single-handing, uh, you know, responsibility for this cringe tour? Yes, I am. Because it was my video that prompted him to say this. Uh, we came to be here and, and why we're doing this uh, and then kind of what we had in mind. Uh, so um, originally uh, the idea had come up of, of me debating somebody else on this topic and that didn't end up happening. So, hey, I, gave, I guess I gave him the idea. I guess my viewers gave him the idea to go on the cringe tour. But at least we now know that Ben Burgess has lost the plot. Because if he just made one Twitter thread about January 6th, then just went on, it would have been a question mark. It would have been like, what is, what? What were you saying? But now we know it's not just a question mark. It's a blemish. It's a cancer on his career. It's a cancer on everything else he said and he will say. And until he realizes how wrong he is, I question everything he's going to say going forward. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, David Feldman did a fantastic job in that conversation. And um, I got to go because, uh, you know, sun uh, Saturday and Sunday mornings are usually kind of, you know, rough for me because I got to do a lot. The protest is in less than an hour. So uh, I will uh, see y'all very shortly. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll see y'all in, in 25 hours, 24 hours from now because the next show starts in, uh, well, I will see y'all in 23 hours from now. But either way, uh, y'all have a good one. We'll discuss more of this uh, tomorrow. Um, did anyone else uh, review Aaron's debate? I think Aaron also did a post-debate review with uh, another mutual friend of ours. Uh, and then we also did a post-debate review. But we didn't like go through and watch it like as a reaction like I did with the Feldman one. Um, but, uh, you know, you can go to uh, Aaron's channel to look at those videos. Uh, but anyway, um, thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, you all have a good day. Well, first of all, I'm, uh, I should say something about how we came to be here and, and why we're doing this, uh, and then kind of what we had in mind. Uh, so, um, originally, uh, the idea had come up of, of me debating somebody else on this topic, and that didn't end up happening. Uh, but, yeah, that, yeah this, this actually slowly, uh, the idea had come up of, of me debating somebody else on this topic, and that didn't end up happening. So notice something. I defended him on his bad joke because I have standards and I have principles.